Finding the right things to resell from Dollar Tree can be painful. It can be hard. There's tens of thousands of items. Are you going to scan them all? I don't think so. Uh, but if you watch this video, I am going to break it up into chunks. And these three main chunks, it's really going to be the easiest way, I think, to uh, save yourself a lot of time. Quick personal plug, if you love saving yourself time, I have a Dollar Tree DVD retail arbitrage list. Uh, you can be a member below. It's affordable. It saves you hours and hours of time. And if you buy this, you can track the prices of DVDs and you can see what's going up and, uh, and what's going down. Okay, that's enough about me. Let's talk about these three ways or these three kinds of items that you can buy to make some good money because I know times are not good. People are hurting out there. So the first kind of item is going to be seasonal items. And there's two kinds of seasonal items. The first kind is going to be things that have the actual year on the product. And these are less desirable from a retail arbitrage perspective. Why, you ask? I'll wait. Well, because if they have a year on them, they're only good for 12 months. Maybe there's a bit more leeway because you can buy, let's say, 2023 uh, New Year's Eve stuff in December of 2022. And if it doesn't sell, you can rebrand it as uh, graduation, you know, hats and plates. But like, for example, those Dollar Tree rubber duckies that say 2023 on the hat that I bought in my last Dollar Tree retail arbitrage video where I took a GoPro and walked in the store and showed you the exact same things I was buying uh, if those don't sell by August, I'm going to have to auction off the rest as like dog chew toys or something. It's not going to be good, but uh, they are selling. I'm selling the duckies for $12.95, and um, I think partially that's because they are a low supply product for the aforementioned reasons. That kind of seasonal stuff is a great place to start. If you see things with years on them, I'd say look it up. The second kind of seasonal item is going to be things that have to do with the actual seasons or holidays. So right now it's spring. It's 45 and raining outside. You couldn't tell it's spring, but it is spring. People are gardening. And so what are they buying? Gardening stuff. Lawn gnome stuff. Uh, an example of gardening stuff that I sell are Job's fertilizer sticks. I sell them in one packs and five packs. They're very lightweight easy to bundle up, uh, and the kind of thing that have a seasonal place. Uh, and so again, they're being stocked in smaller quantities uh, at Dollar Trees. And although I can uh, sell them year round, and I do sell them year round, most of the time they sell this time of year. You can take these same rules, the same principles, and apply them to something like uh, American flag stuff around the 4th of July, or, you know, harvest-related stuff in the fall. Uh, you can also go, if you want a little, you know, freebie about what DVDs to buy, and do seasonal DVDs, make sure you look those up. Here's an example. Shutter Films makes tons of low-budget horror movies. Low-budget horror movies are very popular around Halloween. You know, typically these films are going to sell for about eight bucks on Amazon year round, except for around Halloween when they made triple in price, double or triple pretty reliably for a lot of the more popular titles. I love them. I love selling that kind of stuff. Uh, it's fun for people to buy and watch at, you know, parties or whatever. And it's fun for me because I am making, you know, 10 or 15 bucks on these DVDs. Those aren't the only ones that sell for a lot of money. I sold Luther probably 200 copies for 25 bucks a pop two or three years ago. So that's not the only kind of DVD that skyrockets in value, but it's a pretty reliable characteristic that allows you to more accurately uh, make your purchases. Another kind of Dollar Tree item I love to buy is things that have been liquidated or reverse logistic or redistributed to Dollar Trees. Uh, here's two examples. Example number one is books. Almost all the books at any given Dollar Tree are going to come from larger stores like Half Price Books or Walmart or wherever. Uh, and sometimes you'll see a remainder mark on the bottom of the book. Look out for that. Uh, you couldn't sell it as new if it has that kind of marking on it. 
but sometimes they don't. Another example is going to be like uh, the movie Lightyear, the Buzz Lightyear spinoff. Did not do very well in theaters. I think people didn't like it. They thought it was not the best use of the uh, intellectual property. And uh, as a result of the disfavor from the masses, uh, the products ended up being overproduced and they got redistributed to Dollar Trees. Now here's the flip side of that. Yes, demand is low, but the people who did like Dollar Tree, who do love Disney no matter what, who do want that kind of stuff, are still willing to pay the original retail price. So yeah, there can be a race to the bottom, but it's going to have much more staying power than an unbranded toy. You know, people are always going to like Disney stuff. Personally, I would not sell these on Amazon. I'd stick to eBay, but uh, they are going to sell for the original retail price, maybe even more the further away from the original release date we get. You know, things, the rarer they are, the fewer there are for sale, the more you can charge. Those are our two main types of liquidation products. You're going to see more, you know, we sold uh, eight packs of some fancy bottled water. It was like electrolyte, caffeine stuff. Those were liquidated. Uh, we sold those for 20 bucks plus shipping. It was absolutely insane. It was a total windfall. Those are few and far between. But if you really are looking at Dollar Tree products through the lens of what's seasonal, what's liquidated, what's rare, what's going to have staying power, what's going to have uh, ups and downs in demand that I can capitalize on, you're going to make yourself some pretty decent money. Not $100,000 but easily a couple hundred bucks a month. Our final item, and I think this is probably the one you could base your business around the most and has the most uh, chance to turn into a larger kind of business is replenishables. Replenishables that are hopefully consumable in some kind of fashion. Now, consumable could mean you eat it like candy or food or waters or whatever, although those will have expiration dates and be aware of that. Or consumable could mean you use it in some one-off fashion, like an envelope, for example. Meat envelopes, they sell them in 40 packs and 60 packs, I think, at Dollar Trees. If you can find these replenishable, consumable items, you can just put the listings on your store, set it, and forget it, because they're always going to be in Dollar Trees, unlike the seasonal items, which will be gone when the season's over. And unlike liquidation items, they're not going to be gone when they're sold out. Uh, and the flip side of this is there's more competition, so the profits are lower. But again, if you have an evenly balanced store that includes seasonal liquidation and replenishable slash consumable, that's going to be a good uh, the good structure, I guess you might call it, of a, a successful Dollar Tree or any retail arbitrage business. And these principles don't just apply to Dollar Tree. You can do it anywhere. You can do it at Walmart. You can do it at Kroger. You can do it at Target. Uh, if you understand what creates demand, you can transpose that across many different uh, scenarios and make yourself some money. Thanks for watching, guys. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you later.